Derby Wars, racing's biggest contest site is now even bigger with more than 200 games every day. Check out Survivor, Derby Wars' hottest new game. It's fun, easy to play, and for just four bucks, you could win a grand. Just pick a horse to finish first, second, or third and advance to the next race. With daily payouts and games starting every hour, you'll see why fans are racing to play Survivor. Go to DerbyWars.com now, use promo code SURVIVOR to get five free Survivor games with your first deposit. Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I'm great, Brian. It's a time of year when we've got some pretty good action on both the East Coast and the West Coast. Dual coast, big races. Did you have a nice holiday, Matt? It was Memorial Day, of course, yesterday. I did have a good holiday. It was nice and hot and summery here in New Jersey. Yeah, hot here in Kentucky. We hope all our viewers had a wonderful holiday weekend as well. Matt, let's get right down to business, though. The first thing we're going to talk about today, of course, is the Belmont Stakes. We are only 11 days away now, Matt, and we are looking at a possible field of about 10. And uh, a lot of these horses ran uh, in the Kentucky Derby. More of them are coming out of the Kentucky Derby than the Preakness. There's a few Preakness runners in here, of course including the winner, Exaggerator. Matt, I think he might be odds-on as Nyquist was in the Preakness. Yeah, no doubt Exaggerator is going to be a big, a big favorite in the Belmont, and deservedly so. He, he's kind of our, our 2016 Iron Horse. He's the only one that's going to do all three jewels, and he's a horse that seems to, uh, from all indications and comments from... Uh, the trainer seems to be a horse that likes to run and bounces back out of, uh, out of hard work in, in great condition and has, uh, you know, still has a lot of spirit left in him. So uh, he deserves to be a big favorite on Belmont Day. He does deserve to be a big favorite, Matt. Dances every dance, travels well. Unfortunately, Matt, I am, my, my uh, email is now blowing up they're all coming from Japan, even though we're not live, folks. It's weird. <laughs> but uh, Japanese are yelling now, what about Lonnie? Lonnie's going to run in all three legs, Matt. You didn't forget Lonnie, did you? I'm sorry, Brian. You are right. Uh, uh, Lonnie is going to run in all, three re in all three legs. I don't know. Maybe there's a reason that I forgot. Well, you know what, Matt? He didn't run poorly. We said it after the Derby. He had some trouble. He moved up for ninth. And then in the Preakness, he was running well at the end uh, to get into that big picture for second, at least. He finished fifth. Lonnie's another one coming out of the Derby. Maybe the most interesting horse coming out of the Derby, Sands Exaggerator, would be Sudden Breaking News, who should vie for second choice in the Belmont. Sudden Breaking News did not have the best of trips in the Derby. He made up a lot of ground in the stretch. Yep, he was the horse that uh, after the Derby, you and I were both saying, uh, one more jump or a couple more strides, and he would have been the third place finisher in uh, in the Derby. And you know, he's a horse that's that in the past has shown <laughs> the ability to be a little bit closer than in some of the races at uh, uh, this year. And that might not be a bad strategy to employ in the Belmont Stakes. Yeah, I can really go two ways on him. I think he's a very nice horse, and I think he's a horse, Matt, who does want to run all day, which, of course, helps him in the Belmont. But this year, if you look at his racing this year, it does look like he really wants to come from well off the pace, and, and, and that generally doesn't work quite as well because they've run so long already. They've run nine, ten furlongs, and it's hard for these horses to commence the same kind of rally after they've already run as far as they've ever run. So if sudden breaking news is to make a big dent in the Belmont Stakes. I think the, uh, the idea of being closer early helps him. Uh, Matt, a few other horses coming out of the Derby I think are interesting. Uh, Brody's Cause I think will certainly be in the Derby, the Bluegrass winner. Uh, seventh in the Derby, didn't make a huge run, but I, I, I see him maybe liking a mile and a half as well. Uh, Creator is a possibility still from the Steve Asmussen barn after getting sideswiped 
uh, big time on the turn of the Derby. And then Destin. Destin's an interesting horse. Ran a pretty good Derby, a little, little slow at the start, moved up nicely, hung around for six. Is Destin one you're, you'll be looking at in the Belmont? Well, you know, Brian, it, it, and like you were mentioning earlier, I, I think the most important quality for a horse to be successful in the Belmont Stakes is that they can handle the distance, but they run those steady quarter-mile fractions all the way around the track. And like you said, Brian, after you've gone a mile and a quarter and you hit that Belmont uh, stretch, it's hard to muster up a big closing move like you could see at, like you could run at Oaklawn Park, one of those tracks that has a relatively short stretch and the distance isn't there. And I don't know, Brian, maybe Destin is one of those horses that, that could churn out those 24 and change fractions. And that's usually a pretty good thing in the Belmont Stakes. Yeah, and his trainer, Todd Pletcher, has done this before, Matt, recently. Not winning uh, with the horses I'm about to mention. Dunkirk, I thought, ran a very good race up close early. Uh, commissioner, uh, just a couple years ago, uh, almost won the thing over horses that I thought were probably better than him. But he was able to set those steady fractions throughout, and Commissioner almost beat Tonalist in California Chrome. Uh, he did beat California Chrome as he just missed the win a couple years ago. Uh, Dustin, close to the pace, but also the other Pletcher. It looks like Stradivari is going to run, Matt, and I think this is one of the biggest uh, news items of the, uh, of the time between the Preakness and the Belmont, because Stradivari is a big talent, and he has enough pace to probably be on the lead in this race. Yeah, and, and if the field had come up differently, uh, Brian, I don't think we necessarily would have seen Stradivari in here, but because the field has been put together that you know, everybody's saying the same thing. There's not much pace in there. There's not much pace in there. Um, just because of that, Stradivari seems to be a perfect fit in this situation. Another talented horse, you know, very lightly raced, though, to, to get this mile and a half. But, again, like I said, he could turn out the kind of fractions. He's got to turn a foot. Who knows? And, and Pletcher, as you said, Brian, seems to have a way of – getting his horses ready to do that kind of thing. That's really the kind of training methods that uh, Pletcher has. They kind of do that same kind of thing. When his horses train, they run those 24 fractions all the time. Yeah, and Stradivari, I think, could be the other one vying for the second choice in here. Uh, we haven't mentioned the Peter Pan horses while at, while. About Deb is a lightly raced horse who came from California to run a pretty good race in the Peter Pan. And better than him was the New York bred Governor Malibu, who rallied pretty well uh, up the rail originally behind uh, the winner Unified. Maybe the New York bred has a chance in here. Yeah, uh, I think once you get below Exaggerator, it's hard to separate and pick one of them out uh, uh, as, as the second best horse in the race. Um, it's, an, it's a really interesting Belmont Stakes, Brian. At this point, I, I, don't, know, I, I don't know what I will do in there yet. Uh, Exaggerate is the big favorite, but he's had the tough campaign, and, and anything can happen going that uh, mile and a half. Mile and a half. I, Exaggerator might, might just prove best, but at a mile and a half, I also think there is a vulnerability of the, of the favorite. Maybe we're thinking four to five on Exaggerator to become only the 14th horse in history to win uh, both the Preakness and the Belmont. He certainly has the talent to do it, but I don't think it's a done deal yet. We're, Matt, I hope, you, I hope you have more for me in a week. Not that that wasn't great, but I, I, I want some firmer stances and predictions from you next week as we really get into our Belmont Stakes handicapping. Deal? Yeah. Uh, no question, Brian. That's what we always, uh, we always come up with good uh, predictions. You and I make our choices in that final show before the, our Triple Crown events. Yes, and, and hopefully they all are good predictions, Matt. Hey, Matt, before the Belmont, we got a pretty big one, or at least a very interesting matchup. Uh, it's going to happen at Santa Anita on Saturday, this coming Saturday. It's uh, June 4th, the Vanity Mile, and it's a matchup of champions. You don't get this a lot in this day and age, less now than you used to, I think. The Vanity Mile will have the three-time champion, 
the great. I'm going to call her great now. I don't think there's any other word for her. She's won 16 of 21. Of course, I'm talking about Beholder, last year's Pacific Classic winner, last year's older champion, Mare. She was two-year-old Philly champion. She was three-year-old Philly champion. Fortunately, she hasn't uh, traveled quite as well as some, so she's missed a few Breeders' Cups. But Beholder is just a great mare. She's had one run once this year. She won easily, uh, kind of a walk in the park in the adoration stakes. But she'll be facing a young champion who we really don't know how good Stellar Wynn could be just yet. Stellar Wynn, Matt, will be making her first race of the year on Saturday. Yeah, and uh, I think we're going to watch the uh, uh, stretch run of the Breeders' Cup, the Breeders' Cup Distaff last year, where Stellar Wynn was was terrific in there. What a stretch battle that was with uh, Stop Charging Maria. Those two knocked heads all the way down the stretch. I was pulling for Stellar Wind in there. <laughs> Would have made a big difference for me on some uh, on some tickets on that uh, on that Friday card. But very very talented horse. Tough task, Brian, hooking up with Beholder on your first start back since the Breeders' Cup. However. Yeah, absolutely, Matt. There, there's not much tougher task in American racing right now than facing Beholder. I will say, on the other hand, that Beholder is facing a much better female than she's faced in a long time in Stellar Wind. She's only had eight lifetime races. I'm talking about Stellar Wind here. The Breeders' Cup showed just how good she was. Remember, Stop Charging Maria was hurting her out uh, for quite a bit of the stretch. Uh, there was a, a claim of foul, and she only lost by a head or a neck or so. So Stellar Wind might have been best that day as a, as a still relatively lightly raced three-year-old filly, daughter of Curlin. She could be on the improve this year and really good. Uh, so Beholder, I'm interested to see the race, but of course it's hard to pick against Beholder. Yeah, without question, Brian. Uh, uh, you know, the, the big mare is a, such a special, special horse, but... I, Let's see what Stellar Wind can do. It, it could be interesting coming down the stretch. A fresh Stellar Wind at one mile. Should be fun. Uh, stellar Wind uh, is up against it, against Beholder. But she's a champion. She's a horse that should be uh, improving at four. So it, it's much must-watch racing, isn't it? No question, Brian. Probably, what, a uh, $3.20 exacta payoff? Well... Let's not go down that road yet, Matt, but yeah, maybe so. Beholder, Stellar win two champions. When champions collide, uh, two great records at Santa Anita. It should be fun. That's Saturday, the week before the Belmont. That's June 4. Matt, let's look back quickly at what happened last week. Uh, despite the holiday weekend, I don't think there were a ton of big races, but I think there were some very, very interesting performances by horses that we liked at two coming back at three. I'm talking about on the East Coast on Thursday, we saw the talented son of Twirling Candy from the Chad Brown Barn. That's Gift Box. Come back in a, in a pretty loaded allowance race. A lot of uh, stakes potential three-year-olds in there, and Gift Box looked good. Yeah, Brian. Uh, it was a big, uh, it was a terrific field in that allowance race. Those allowance races in New York have uh, pretty big purses, and, and we were waiting for Gift Box for a long time. He'd shown a lot of promised a two-year-old in some of those races at Aqueduct against uh, Mohamed and such. And he came back and what a terrific performance sitting off the pace and gobbling up that field and opening up nicely down the stretch. Yeah, gift box, Matt, if, if we remember correctly, the, uh, the Remsen was only his third lifetime race. He was highly regarded coming off a nice win. He ran a good third to Mohamed that day in the Remsen. But I think what we saw on Thursday was a more mature version of Gift Box and one that looks like a graded stakes horse again immediately. Uh, Chad Brown being a Saratoga guy, I think the Jim Dandy and the Travers should be right up this horse's alley. Maybe he won runs in a stakes race uh, coming up at Beaumont, uh, the Dwyer or something beforehand. But Gift Box looks like a horse that we need to watch on the road past the Belmont, on the road to the Travers, Matt. We're already starting to talk Midsummer Derby here on Horse Center, folks. Gift box. But was he the most impressive returning three-year-old colt over the weekend, Matt? Because there was a horse that ran yesterday that, that kind of wowed him as well. 
Yeah, different kind of situation, uh, different kinds of races. Uh, but uh, Dre Fong was back uh, uh, after some problems, uh, after his super impressive uh, maiden victory. And uh, he turned it on again, going uh, a, a speedy, speedy victory, going six furlongs and 108 and change. Yeah, and Matt, this was uh, he wasn't even the favorite in this race. Now, he was making his first start in, in just about half over half a year or so. So he was away for a while, but there were some pretty good older sprinters in there. And Dre Fong was right in the mix, going fast early, and when they straightened out, it was over. Looks really talented. Now, the interesting thing about him now, second race of his life, big maiden score at Del Mar. Uh, third race of his life after the long layoff, big allowance score at Santa Anita. These are both coming sprints, but this horse is bred to run all day, really. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, big uh, strapping horse and uh, with a tremendous amount of talent. And again, here we are looking down the road after the Triple Crown. We still got the Belmont Stakes. But there's a lot of interesting horses still in this uh, three-year-old crop and some interesting things uh, uh, to come as we uh, have head into the second half of the three-year-old season. Yeah, Dre Fong, the son of Gio Ponte for the Bob Baffert Barn. Gift box, the son of Twirling Candy for the Chad Brown Barn. Two very successful barns in the summer as well the rest of the year. But I think these are great at stakes winners about to happen. So it was nice to, to see them return last weekend. Uh, the only grade one race of the, uh, the weekend, Matt, was the Gamely Stakes. Heavy, heavy favorite was Wikela, the uh, Wikila, excuse me, the French uh, mare who had a very nice record in France running against good horses. And her first race in America, she rallied for second to Teppin in the grade one race at Keeneland, the Jenny Wiley. But the horse she beat in there, the horse who finished third, who had shipped from California, her name is Illuminant for Eclipse Thoroughbred Partners, Mike McCarthy, the longtime Todd Pletcher, Pletcher assistant, is her trainer. And uh, uh, Wakila, I have a hard time saying that name apparently, Wakila had no answers for Illuminate down the gamely stretch. Yeah, and, and again, it's uh, every, all of these races keep making Teppan look, uh, look even better. Uh, but uh, yeah, Illuminate just took control at the top of the stretch and, and, and nobody, could, uh, nobody could gain on, on, on her down the stretch. And, you know, that's an achievement when you put away uh, a Chad Brown horse handily and a Chad Brown horse that shipped in from the east and Javier Castellano made the flight in from the east also. I don't think that Javier was thinking that he was making that flight to finish second. No, that's right. I, and I think Wakila has still a big uh, future in America. They still should be high in her. It was a tough, tough thing to do to come to California off the French and the Keeneland racing, different kind of turf course. Illuminant, of course, had spent most of her year there. Illuminant, by the way, is a four-year-old filly, but she didn't break her maiden until less than a year ago. Uh, she's really run well on the turf, very consistent. Both were uh, well beaten second and third, as Matt alluded to in the Jenny Wiley. So maybe the biggest takeaway from this race is that Teppin is really good. We're going to see her next at Royal Ascot. No nasal strip for her in, in, in Ascot, Matt. Are you worried? No, I'm not worried at all, Brian. I don't. I'm worried. I, I don't really believe that the nasal strip does anything particular to help, uh, to help thoroughbreds. I think my wife would like me to wear one at night so I didn't, don't snore, but I don't think it helps the, the racehorses that much. Well, Matt, you know what? We could add that. Even though we won't be at Ascot this year, we can add the... Uh, the nasal strip to our our uh, outfit that day. We'll wear nasal strips, top hat, <laughs> and tails for Teppin. Matt, next week we are going to be back, and we're going to be talking even more Belmont Stakes. We're going to get into the pace scenario. We're going to get into our top picks, and maybe even a little bit of betting strategy for the third leg of the Triple Crown. It's interesting. I think it's going to be a good race. Uh, thank you for joining me today, Matt. It's, it's my pleasure, and, and we'll also, no doubt, on uh, our next show be talking about the uh, undercard on the Belmont Stakes Day, where, I don't know, I think some of those undercard races might actually be uh, more interesting races than the Belmont Stakes itself. 
And as always, it's a pleasure to be here, Brian. And thank you, Ember Marr, for producing the show. Great point, Matt. Yes, we're going to talk about the Met Mile, the Ogden Phipps, all those big races, the Manhattan. It's just a, it, it's a, it's a Breeders' Cup at a different time of year. That's all it is, Matt, at Belmont Park in two weeks. So we're excited about that. Thank you, Ember Marr. Most of all, thank you out there for watching every week. We love doing Horse Center for you. I hope you get a lot out of the show. We're brought to you by the best contest site out there, Derby Wars. We will see you next week.